اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وعلى اله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد in the last session we were speaking about the various features of the kaaba amongst them the thing that you will see straight away is that the kaaba has a covering and this covering goes back to the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam where it is said that after fathul makkah rasulullah gave a covering of the kaaba which was red and white uh, in color and that it started like that and then later on at the time of the umayyads of the time of the khulafa it was all white then the umayyads changed it the abbasid changed it and then later on it was changed to a black color and that has stayed now this is called the kiswa and it is got an interesting history as well or a modern history in the sense that this kiswa is much heavier than it looks the weight of it is 2 tons and it is made of about 650 kilos of silk and, and mixed with cotton and 150 kilos of pure gold that goes into the ayat and the what is written on different aspects of the of of this uh, kiswa it's produced it used to be come from egypt but then at the time of fahad it, there was a special uh, complex built for making the kiswa and it is now made in makkah and can be visited at umrah time you can go and see it is changed every year it is changed every year on the 9th of zilhaj on the 9th of zilhaj makkah empties out because all the hujjaj they go to mina um, and and on to arafat and meanwhile it is possible then to come and remove the old kiswa and replace it so when you look at it, it is identical to the time before but if you come back when you come back from arafat you look at the date on the door the kiswa part which is on the door of the kaaba you will see that the new year has been put in the cost of making it is 6 million dollars and it is funded by the saudis and what they have is it's made on the same template 47 pieces of cloth are are made each one 14 meters long and 1 meter wide okay and then these are stitched together and afterwards when the hajj season is over these pieces are cut up and they are given to dignitaries or uh, to other uh, people uh, some tribes uh, who are live in makkah they get one and so on so it's possible to get smaller and smaller pieces as well in the markets and so on as a tabarruk this kiswa then is wrapped around the kaaba and you will see in the shadow one as i mentioned the plinth there are copper uh, uh, rings embedded into it and those secure the kiswa uh, as well one of the other things that is an important feature of the kaaba is of course the hajar al aswad it is something that has got a fiqhi relevance in the sense that al hajar al aswad is the place where tawaf begins and tawaf ends each round starts and ends there and there are seven rounds what is this al hajar al aswad most people don't get a chance to study it because you can't get close to it there is so much respect given to it that everybody wants to try to touch it as indeed rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam himself kissed it and touched it in previous times we are told that hajar al aswad was a stone that came from heaven in other hadith it is one of allah's angels that records those who come for hajj and on the day of judgment will give shahada that so and so came that is why we are told in the tawaf when you reach it you just salute it to show that i am there with bismillah allahu akbar or anything like this as a salutation and it will give witness on the day of judgment that this person did visit the kaaba it was in the form of a stone some say the stone was white before and later on became black in any case um the interesting thing is that what people may not know is that when you look at it it looks like it is about one and a half, one foot and more in size but over the years unfortunately from the earliest times uh, of islam this stone fascinated people and uh, they would take it 
take bits of it away. It got worn in 930 Hijra. Uh, sorry, in 317 Hijra, 930 uh, AD. The, the stone was stolen by the Karamita sect of Egypt and they kept it for 20 years and later on in exchange for a huge amount of money they returned it because in those days I suppose the Kaaba was not as secure as it is now. Um, in the process though only eight small chiplets of the Kaaba of the Hajj al-Aswad remain. Not very big in size and these are carefully then embedded into a carrier stone which is what is put in. And so there are only these eight that remain from it, but alhamdulillah, they still remain from it. Um, the other thing that is a striking feature of the Kaaba is Hijr al-Ismail. This is that semicircular wall that is between Rukh Iraqi and Rukh Shami. And it is so between the, the, the side that faces north and the side that faces west. Um, it is sometimes called Hatim, which means broken, because the wall is broken. You know, it's not connected directly both ways. It's, there is a space between the Kaaba and, and the uh, Hajr. Or sometimes it's called Hazira, which means like a fence, uh, something that, uh, you know, is um, enclosure, because that is the kind of shape it is. Now, the history goes back to the time when Nabi Ibrahim salam came here uh, with his wife Hajar and young son Ismail. This is where they settled. In fact, in this Hajar is where their home was, next to the Kaaba. And later on, right next to their home, Allah said to Ibrahim salam, this is Kaaba. Rebuild it here. And so that is where they, but that was their area where they live. Some people say that actually Hajar Ismail is bigger than what is currently there, that it extends up to Zamzam. And this was where they kept their sheep, and that was where they had settled. So this was their home. Right? Um, now, this is, it's, it, it is about eight, it comes to about eight and a half, nine meters away from the Kaaba. Its size is one and a half meters, and its, its, its height is just under a meter, at about nine, 90 centimeters. Again, because it is considered part of the Tawaf, uh, we are told that we should not do tawaf between Hajr Ismail and Kaaba. And we know this from several hadiths. There is hadith in uh, Bukhari as well that Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, said to Rasulullah, I want to pray inside the Kaaba. So he said to her, pray in the Hijr. And that from that we have that this was considered as part of the Kaaba as well. Um, the other thing that you see when you are there is, of course, Maqam Ibrahim. These are the things that immediately become visible as special areas. Maqam Ibrahim is a stone on which Nabi Ibrahim salam, stood when he was building the Kaaba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Imran says, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Inna awwala baytin wudhi ali nasi illa alladhi bi bakka mubarakan wa hudan lil alameen Fihi ayatun bayjinat maqamu Ibrahim. There are some very important landmarks inside this holy house, which was the first house that was uh, dedicated for the worship of Allah, and one of them is the place of Ibrahim. Now, what is the place of Ibrahim? Ibrahim salam stood on this large boulder to keep building the Kaaba. The first question that arises is that, well, it's quite far from the Kaaba. You know, how was he building it, standing there? And the answer to that is at the time of Rasulullah, and up to the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Khilafat of uh, Abu Bakr, it was attached to the Kaaba, right next to it, because that is where it should be, where he stands on it and builds. But at the time of the second khalif, after consultation with the sahaba, it was decided that because the number of hujjaj, number of muslimin, because of the futuhat, many people had become Muslim. And these people obviously wanted to come for hajj now. Right? The Muslim empire had increased tremendously in size. So this was coming in the way. 
So they, with the consensus of the other Sahaba, they moved it to where it is now. Right? And it's interesting that in the 50s, also King Abdul Aziz, also he talked to the councils of Muslims all over the world, uh, saying that we follow this sunnah and we move it right to the end of Mataf for the same reason. But the Muslims are not ready to do that. They say, we don't touch now anything from those days. Let's leave it like this. So we are told to try to do the tawaf within Maqam, between Maqam Ibrahim and the Kaaba as much as is possible. When you look into it, you will see that there are two footprints. The shape of the impressions of two footprints. And these are the feet. This is where Nabi Ibrahim stood. As to why it is sunk into the stone, we have a hadith that says that when Nabi Ibrahim salam finished building the Kaaba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, give an adhan to the people to come. وَعَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَعْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَلَا كُلِّ ضَامِنًا Call the people to hajj. And Imam Sadiq salam said that when he called out, he did not call out to only the few people who may have been sitting there. He called out in a way that was heard by those yet to be born. And those souls who said, Labbaik ya da'i, they will go for hajj. And those souls who did not reply this adhan of Ibrahim, they will not go for hajj. And, say, and Ibn Abi, uh, Imam Sadiq salam said that he used spiritual energy of a kind that caused his feet to sink into stone. And he gave out this da'wah, this, this call, come to the Hajj. Inshallah, we will carry on speaking about other features of the uh, Masjid al-Haram in the session to come. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.